Hi folks, Chris Berry here once again, and I'm going to do a lesson on the Clarence Ashley Banjo tune, The Cuckoo Bird. And I taught this at the Golita Festival this year uh, in, uh, on October 11th, I believe it was. And so this, uh, this is for the people that came to my banjo workshop and also anyone else is interested. Uh, we're in a G-modal tuning or sawmill tuning, as uh, it's usually called, uh, which is regular G tuning with the second string tuned up to C. Uh, sounds like this. And those notes are G, D, G, C, D. And uh, the Cuckoo Bird is one of the classic uh, frailing banjo tunes recorded by Clarence Ashley back in the 20s, and he made records of it in the 60s as well. There are plenty of recordings of him doing it on YouTube, the original 78. There's uh, some film of him from the 60s playing it. Uh, he recorded it with Doc Watson. He recorded it with some other folks. Uh, I'll let you hunt that out. There's other people who play this tune uh, as well. It's a pretty common banjo tune. And uh, there's lots of different versions of it, but Ashley's is sort of the classic one. So I'm going to play the tune through uh, a few times. I won't sing all the verses, but just to give you an idea of what it sounds like. And then I'll, uh, I'll break it up and play it slow. So hopefully you can pick it up. Here we go. Lord, build me a cabin on the mountain so high, so I can see Willie as he goes on by. And she wobbles as she flies. She never say cuckoo till the 14th of July. I played cards in England and I played them in Spain. I bet you. Ten dollars, I beat you this game. So they get an idea of uh, of how the tune sounds played up to speed, and uh, let me break it apart for you. There's two sections to the tune. There's the uh, the part where you sing and the break in between and they're very similar and I don't think you're gonna have any trouble picking it up the main lick um, the only part I think that may give you some trouble if you haven't uh, done drop thumb before uh, this is a good tune to uh, to use it on the main lick of the tune is this this little run right here and that repeats over and over uh, throughout the tune in various places which I'll break down for you but if you, if you can get that down smoothly, you won't have any trouble with the rest of the tune. And the way that goes is you're hitting the, uh, the first string open with your index finger, and then the, your thumb hits the second string. That's the drop thumb part. And then your middle finger, I'm sorry, your index finger hits the third fret of the third string, and then your index finger then hits the third string open. It's four notes. You can see the way my thumb comes down there. That's just the regular frailing right there. And the, so you can hear how that fits in. So you'll be playing that lick over and over again. It doesn't really matter too much the left hand fingering for this tune. Uh, you won't really be playing uh, any chords except this one partial chord, which in this tuning is an F chord, and uh, that's going to be, when we get to it, is going to be uh, the third fret of the fourth string and the second fret of the third string at the same time. And if you played the whole chord, you'd, you'd put your finger down here on the third fret of the uh, first string as well. It would be an F chord. But you only need to play the bottom part of it for this tune. It doesn't matter which fingers you use. I tend to use the ring and middle. 
sometimes the exactly. pinky in the middle, depending on what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to start with the part where you sing. And uh, I'll sing it real slowly. First, you just get a feel of it uh, slower. Um, you're going to be making a hammer on or a slide, whichever you prefer, from the second to third fret on the th third string here. And then you're going to play the, uh, the drop thumb lick. And you'll do that twice. And it sounds like this. You don't have to put that slide in the second time. Let me do that again. All right. And that's the part where you sing, Oh, the cuckoo, she's a pretty bird. At the third line of the tune, um, you can play this or you can just play the open string. So we've got and it ends like this. So instead of instead of coming and doing this drop thumb lick, you're going to end in this chord that I mentioned before. And so you start with the little drop thumb. And instead of playing the third fret of uh, the third string, you're going to play the second fret with your index finger. And then you're going to play the third fret of the fourth string with your index finger. So like this. Still got the drop though. So you, here's what you've got so far. Gonna build me log cabin. Let me do that again. Gonna build me log cabin on the mountain so high. And then you follow that up. The last line so high is is open fourth string, the third fret of the fourth string, and then the open third string, and then the drop thumb lick again. So that last line is. together the part where you sing goes like this pretty simple. Um, just try it uh, as slowly as you can till you get it smooth. Let me play it one more time. similar to the part where you sing except it starts differently uh, for each part and you're imitating the cuckoo call and the way you do that is you're going to brush down with your index finger across all the strings and end on the fifth string and you want to be careful to make it all sort of one stroke you don't want it to be two separate strokes you don't want like that you want this and that timing takes a little practice so you're doing sort of a rake across the strings. It's not just a quick brush. You're really digging in. And then ending with the, with the thumb string. And you do that twice. And then you're going to play the third fret of the first string. And then you've got the drop thumb lick. 
All right, let me play the first two lines of the break slow. So far, it's not really any different uh, than what you did the first time, except you're replacing with, with that. All right, then for the third line, you do the rakes again, and you're going to end on the F chord. And then for the fourth line, it's a little different. But for the, uh, for the third line, uh, you've got this. Let me do that again. And again, the drop thumb part is exactly the same as the third line of what you sung before. So the first three together are this. I'll start again. That's the first three. I'll do that one more time. And then the last line is a little different than what you sang. It starts the, the first time, but there's an extra lick in there to play the full melody since you're not singing it. And the fourth line is... And that is... I'll do it again. So it's the open fourth string, the third fret of the fourth string, open third string, third fret again, and then the drop thumb lick. So. so all four lines of the break played slowly are like this. Um, well, let me do that one more time. regular frailing. And that's pretty much the cuckoo bird. You just put the uh, two sections together. Um, and I'll play that one time through kind of slow so you see how the two fit together and then I'll just discuss a couple other little things at the end. Here we go. pretty much the tune and uh, practice it a bit you'll have it down and again there's plenty of versions of it uh, all over the internet to uh, to hear different people doing it one thing I will mention I always like to mention uh, some little uh, additions you can make once you can play the tune and one of the biggest ones in this style is what we call the open string pull-off and the open string pull-off is you take your, I usually do it with my ring finger, but you can do it with your pinky or your middle finger. And what you're going to try to do is you want to sound the first string without fretting it. You're just pulling it to the side very slightly. You're kind of just grabbing it very slightly. And you can see I'm not playing the string at all with my right hand. And that little bit comes on the and of one as you're doing the frailing. So instead of you put it in right after the melody note so you get this sound. And it's really worthwhile learning how to do that. Um, it gives you a nice, especially if you're doing a, a sort of timekeeping to vary between to this. And when you speed it up, becomes sort of a sound of its own. You'll hear a lot of that in Cuckoo Bird and a lot of Clarence Ashley's tunes if you listen to Dark Holler or uh, 
House Carpenter, especially, you're going to hear that all the way through the tune, even while he's playing melody. But in Cuckoo, it comes up maybe like this. That's the, the main sort of ornament that I want to teach you for this tune. So again, it comes one and two and. And don't, don't mash down on the string, just kind of pull it to the side. And you want it to sound relaxed. So if you can get that up to speed, I highly recommend it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I uh, hope... Uh, Hope you got Cuckoo Bird from this, and enjoy playing it. It's a, it's a great tune. If you have any questions, uh, comment here on uh, on YouTube, and I'll, uh, I'll be glad to respond. It may take me a couple of days. I don't uh, check the comments every single day, but I will get back to you. And thanks very much.